Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. Now we're doing a bit of, uh, well, a bit of electrical investigations because with all the talk of potential blackouts and power problems that we could have over winter, I've been thinking, well, I've got loads of spare car batteries, I've got solar panels, inverters. I'm going to take you through everything on here, but let's work out if we can survive, at least for a short time, if we lose the power. It's going to be a relatively quick and simple video this one to be honest uh, we've got plenty of car batteries which we've got spare from various cars hopefully they're going to have a little bit of power left in them you can see this is quite a small one i've got this is a mains inverter so this will convert 12 volts input into 240 to 30 volt output to power mains devices this one's quite a small one won't do an awful lot but you can get larger ones of these. Now I also thought let's try the solar charger and see if it can put at least a little bit back into our battery um, and the solar charge controller. A couple of meters, uh, a test bulb and also quite a heavy load, a, um, a car compressor for blowing up tires but it's also got light on it. So what I'm going to do, wire them all up, let's test the voltage of the battery uh, let's see if this is actually uh, of any use to us. First things first, current battery voltage 12.4 volts, so that's holding not a bad charge actually. Anything 11, 12 volts I think should be okay and hopefully we'll hold up to our little bit of testing that we're going to do. So first thing I'm going to do is connect up a load to it and let's see how much it can actually give us as an output see if it can actually sustain anything because that will also give us the general health of the battery. We've got our little floodlight. Now this floodlight, it's a 12 volt floodlight. Uh, I'm not actually sure how much current it pulls but you can see the battery voltage is still at 12 volts, 12.2 and our solar charge is saying 12.1 so it looks like it can cope with a little bit. Let's just turn that off. I think you press that button, turn the output off. And let's connect the solar panel and see if it's actually going to generate any power at all. It's a small panel, so I'm not expecting huge things out of it. Let's bring in my other meter. We can see this meter is showing our battery voltage here. And at the moment, the solar charge controller is just saying nothing. It's just showing voltage of the battery. This meter here, ignore the slightly off reading, is connected to the solar terminal. So as soon as I plug the solar panel in, we should see whether any voltage is coming out of the solar panel. Now remember, I'm actually in the summer house, so there's not an awful lot of direct bright sunlight, but it might be enough. Let's plug it in. Difficult to do whilst holding the camera as well. Now you can see that the figures jumping about already actually. Uh, we can see the solar panels giving out 12.3 volts and the charge controller is actually saying we're charging and actually looking on the battery we're on 12.3 volts as well. So we are producing a tiny bit of power which is encouraging. It's a trickle charge so it'll help. Now you can obviously do this and wire it all up permanently. I've connected up the inverter, you can see it's now showing voltage and we can switch that on and off and you can power low power devices from that. So for things like charging phones you want to use the, the standard 12 volt car chargers. That would work great for that to keep your phones going a bit longer. You can plug a few little appliances into this, you won't be able to plug hair dryers or anything too powerful. 
Um, now whether it would run a fridge freezer, I'm not sure. We might be able to try that one out. Um, but it, it's something. And I think if you want to use this longer term, this could actually work. Solar panel, if you mount it up somewhere that's getting direct sunlight, that'll help. But what I would also do is throw into the mix a car charger. And this one's a smart car charger that will trickle and maintain the battery. You could leave that plugged into the mains, keeping this system all up and ready just in case the power goes out and you go, oh, I need to use it, I need something powered, then you could just quickly use this setup and it would keep you going for a while, I think. So I'm gonna set it all up and uh, try plugging in a few things. Let's see what happens. I've moved setup, but it's basically the same. Solar panel, battery, solar inverter, which we don't really need for this, but going into our inverter, now, if I turn power on, I've got a mains tester here. Annoying beep, because there's a missing earth, which you'd expect, but it's giving out AC voltage. And now, the bit that I'm interested to test, we have, well, it's a, it's a smallish fridge. It's not a huge fridge, but it's an old fridge that I can try plug in and connect and see what the inverter does. I'm not actually sure whether this will work or whether the inverter will um, trip out or blow, so we'll see what happens. I'm not quite sure how to do this whilst balancing everything, so I'm going to plug the fridge in. Now, we do also have the light and I can listen for the pump noise on the fridge. Let's turn it on. We should get an AC green light come on, which we have. The green light's gone on. Oh! And... Oh, the AC light's flashing. Don't know what that means. It's trying. It's trying to do something, that's for sure. Oh, and I just heard the pump on the fridge start up. So I think it's actually providing power to it and trying to power the fridge. Now, how long it would actually cope with doing this, I'm not really sure. And it is a small fridge, this one, and it's a, it's a nasty load for an inverter to deal with, to be honest. And it's a small inverter, this as well. So I, I was surprised that it's actually doing anything at all. But there you go, it is actually trying. The light's on, the fridge pump is on, it's actually working. Now how long it'll hold and run a fridge for, I really don't know. I might actually set it on test and just leave it and I'll come back to it later and I'll let you know how it gets on. If it melts down or explodes, I'll, uh, I'll try and catch it. Well then, quick update an hour later, it's still up and running. Open the door, you can see the light's still on, and actually the temperature thermometer I've got in here is saying it's down to about four degrees. It's cooling, I can feel ice on the cool box, so I think that is a success. Now the max output for the AC on this is 300 watts. Fridges, 150 to 200, so it should cope. I don't know how long it would run on a battery for, so what I might do is charge a battery up, connect it all up, run it until it goes flat and see how long it would keep the fridge up and running for on a standard car battery um, and I'll let I'll post that back later and see how we get on well I told you it was gonna be a quick video playing around and seeing how we could get by if we did have a power cut or a blackout or anything like that using a few basic things inverter you can get on Amazon next day fairly cheap to be honest solar power they're not the best, these solar panels, but they do a little bit. And of course, any old spare car battery that you've got. Hope you've enjoyed this quick video. Uh, please remember to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video.